due to popular demand today we're going to look at some procreate basics i'm going to do a few different videos on procreate so keep an eye out today we're going to look at some real basics on how you can use it but even if you're an experienced user i recommend you watch because i'm going to sprinkle in some great tips let's jump in so we're just going to start with how to add a canvas. So when you open Procreate, you'll be able to see all of your previous projects or anything that you already have on here. You can import something to start off or put in a photo, but we're just going to start with a blank canvas. So when you tap on the plus, you can add a new canvas. You will have some canvas sizes already set up. You see, I've added some of my own as well and just didn't really name them. But for now, I think we can go with screen size, which will just be the largest it can be for your device. So let's start off by looking at the different brushes that we have on offer. So I'll click on my brush tool and that will open the brush library. Now you'll see that it already comes categorized in many different categories. Anywhere that you see the Procreate symbol, either on a category or on a brush itself, it means that it is a custom brush. So I imported it from somewhere or I created it myself. But the library comes with so many different brushes. Let's try out one. Let's go into sketch and select one of the pencils. So I'm gonna select this 6B pencil. Then I'll tap on my canvas to get back to it. And then if I start drawing and I'm using really light pressure, you see it's not really that, but if I press kind of stronger, you'll see it appear. So just like a normal pencil. And also if I tilt my Apple pencil and I go like this, you can see I could do like some shading and it looks a bit different than it would if I was going straight up. Yeah, so the pressure matters, The kind of angle that you hold it in matters as well. Let's look at another brush. Let's go maybe into artistic and choose something from here. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one that I think is called Terra Lea, but I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Click on the canvas and then you can draw again. Oh, you see, so this one's a bit kind of different. And if I apply more pressure, it goes darker. And if I apply less pressure, then it's more see-through. Now I can also use my finger to paint. And if you use your finger, it will always apply the largest pressure. Yeah, so you can see that when I used my finger, it was just kind of went to that really dark blob. I'm just gonna clear my canvas and then let's look at the brush controls. Now for this, I wanna choose Monoline, which is one of the best brushes out there. I'm gonna go into calligraphy and then just search for Monoline. So Monoline is just kind of this straight, lovely line, which is great. So as you can see, when I draw a line, it's it's kind of thick and this one doesn't have different pressure settings. So if I wanna reduce the brush size, I can do that using the controls over here. So the top one controls the size, so you can see I could bring it down and it's much smaller. And what's really cool is let's say I know that this is a size that I'll be using a lot. So I can tap on it and click on this plus and what happens is it saves that size. So if you use the same brush in multiple different sizes in your design, you can just kind of save that. So I can go here and then you'll see if I kind of get close to it, it sort of snaps to that because it knows I probably want to use that size. The slider on the bottom controls the opacity. So right now it's very opaque. It's just kind of, you can't really see through it. But then if I lower it and I draw again, you'll see that it becomes more see-through. Yeah. And with a see-through brush, what's really cool in Procreate is it mimics uh, sort of how a real pen or brush would um, react. So you see places like this where it's overlapping, they have sort of that overlapping color because it's a transparent layer on top of a transparent layer on top of a transparent layer. So in the top bar, we have a few more tools. So let's look at those. We've got the smudge tool. Now the smudge tool just kind of smudges everything. So if I just apply some pressure on it, you'll see that it just kind of smudges whatever's on the canvas already. And we've got an eraser, which just erases what's there. I'm gonna bring it up a bit to show you that it can erase. Now, what's really cool is that the smudge tool and the eraser tool use the same brush library. So you see my eraser right now is on hard airbrush, but if I change it to something that has a bit of a texture, like a dry brush, now when I try and erase, you see it erases with some sort of like pattern. It doesn't erase just a clean line. And same with the smudge tool. So I have that one on airbrush as well, but you can smudge with something like that, for example. And then you see it, it gives you just a bit more. So the possibilities are really endless when it comes to the, what you can do with the brushes, smudge and the eraser. Now let's talk about colors. So I'm gonna go back to my brush. Uh, I might choose just something nice, maybe something from the artistic, like let's go with wild light. 
So you'll notice there's a circle on the top right. Right now for me it's black because that's the color I have selected. If I click on it, I'll get the disc for the color picker and then I'll have a little palette here at the bottom and a section that shows me the history of my recent colors. Now, the way this circle works is on the outer circle, you will choose the color you're going for. And then on the inner circle, you'll choose the brightness of it and the saturation of it. So it kind of goes from saturated to less saturated and then from dark to bright. And you can also see here that that kind of left square changes. And that's because you have the option to almost like save two colors at once. So right now I'm using this color. And then I can tap on my canvas and you'll see that my brush is now gonna color in that color. And then let's say I'm gonna swap between this orange and I'm just gonna tap on this blue one and that blue. So now when I tap on the canvas, I'm using the blue. So that's the basics of the color, but just to show you what you can do. So you can select a color using this disc or you can use the classic kind of method where you have a slider for the color, a slider for the saturation and a slider for the brightness. And you can see that little circle move, which is pretty cool. Um, then you've got this kind of harmony picker. So when you move one around, it moves the other around with it. So it helps you choose complementary colors. You've got just the values if you want to go with the HSB or the RGB or just type in a hexadecimal. And then you've also got the palettes. Now I have quite a lot of palettes uh, that I've gathered through the years. You can also view them in a card view, which sometimes helps, I guess. It kind of gives you names for them as well. Although the names like you can see here aren't super useful because it's just named all of these dark red and they're actually different shades of skin tone. It can be helpful sometimes, but I think palettes in general are really great. For example, if I go back to disc, which is sort of the default view, you can see here there's the rainbow palette, which is a palette that I've created and I've also linked it in the video so you can download it yourself if you want. Um, so that's one cool thing about palettes because you can share them and then I could just tap on one of these colors and use it straight away. Now the way to create a palette, you just click on the plus over here and say create new palette. It will go to the top of the list. So there we go. Now it looks completely blank, but basically what you need to do is you need to select a color. So let's say this orange, and then you just tap wherever you want to put that color down. So I just keep doing that for a bit just to show you. It's really simple. And then if let's say I wanna reorder them, I just need to hold down on one and then just move it around like that. Then you can also add a palette by clicking this plus and then getting it from a file or getting it from a camera. And this is really cool. You can also ask Procreate to create a palette for you from a photo. So for example, if I click on this now, it opened my photos and I just went into an album called Sunset. Then if let's say I select this picture of a lovely purple sunset, what it will do, it was just take the colors it found in that picture and create a palette out of them, which I think can be useful sometimes. Um, and then you can select one of these palettes to be the default one. So if I just tap on that and say set as default, when I go back to the disc, it's here. One more cool thing about colors is that I can take this with me. So if you're drawing and you keep changing colors, I can just do that, go over here, do this. I can have it on the palette view, quickly swap between different colors. Um, and that could be really 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 helpful one more cool thing that you can do is if you want to go back to the previous color so for example i'm going to use this sort of salmony color and then i'm going to a yellow color and i know i want to go back to the salmon what i can do is i can just hold and press on the circle and it will say previous color and now i have salmon one more cool thing that you can do with colors is you can eye drop. So let's say I wanna get this blue again, this light blue. What I can do is I can hold my finger down until I get this sort of circle pop up. You'll see that the bottom half of the circle is showing me the color that I have selected now. So it's showing me that salmony color and the top half is showing me whatever it's sort of picking up. So I can pick up this blue and then it changes to that and I get an exact color match. So you might've noticed me doing all sorts of gestures with my fingers. So let's talk about gestures for a second. Within Procreate, I can use a two finger tap to undo. So you see that blob kind of disappeared and I can use a three finger tap to redo. If I put two fingers down and hold it, it will do sort of a rapid undo. So it undoes lots of things. And if I put three fingers down, it will do a rapid redo. So it just kind of brings everything back together, which is really cool. I can use pinch and zoom and move things around just like you would an image. Um, but what I love about Procreate is if you just pinch it kind of like that with two fingers, it brings it back to kind of the height or the width that it should be. 
yeah, so you see, now I'm back to where I started. If I tap with four fingers, so I just tap, it removes all of the UI, uh, which can be really nice if you just wanna see your artwork. And then to bring it back, I can either tap this little guy that appeared here, or I can tap again with four fingers to just make it appear. Um, and the last one that I learned really recently, and it's really cool, if you use three fingers, put them down in scrub, it clears your entire layer. Saying layers, let's talk a bit about layers. Um, I'm gonna just do a little drawing. I'm gonna draw some waves. So I'm gonna do like something like that. Then I'll make my brush bigger and I'll just kind of fill them in a bit. It doesn't need to be super neat and pretty. So now let's say I wanna draw a sun or something like that. So I'm gonna go here and select my salmon-y color again. And then I'm gonna actually go and get monoline. Just gonna draw a circle. Nope, undo. I'm really bad at drawing circles. There you go. So one more cool trick I wanna show you is in order to fill this shape right, I wanna give it a red background. I can just go in and sort of paint it, but I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna undo. So what I can do is use color drop. So I'll just grab my circle over here and drag it in and let go. And that will fill that entire space up, which I think is really cool. Uh, I'm just gonna undo that and show you that if I place it in and then I hold it, you see that there's like a threshold. So if I scrub right and left, it's saying how much it's actually going to fill. Now, because the mono line is such a solid brush, you won't see a big difference. But if I use something like chalk, for example, if I bring that in, you'll see that the threshold really matters. So if I bring that down, you see that it's leaving a bit of a gap. It's not filling everything up. So you might need to find what threshold is kind of appropriate for you and your design. So I've selected, uh, so I've created this sun. Um, now, why don't I make a little boat? So I'm gonna draw a boat and then I'll place it like that. Now, I realize actually that the boat should probably be behind the waves. So I could go in with my eraser and just start, oh my, yeah, but you see what happens. I'm erasing everything. So the way to combat that is using layers. I'm just gonna undo and show you what I mean by layers. So if you've used design software before, you'll be familiar with layers in general, uh, but just to give a bit of explanation, layers are almost like a transparent sheet that has a design on top of it. So if you, I go into here, um, you'll see that everything now is on the same layer, it's on layer one. But then if I add a new layer, then just to show you how it works, I'm gonna create a really kind of messy design here just to show you, great. So now layer two sits on top of layer one. So this brown kind of over here is on top of my circle. But if I hold it down and move it below, you'll see that now it's behind. Here you can really see it because this layer is very opaque. So anything that goes underneath, you won't be able to see it. But over here, obviously this layer has a lot of transparency, but you can still see that that blue pattern sits on top of the brown, right? If I swap them, you will see a clear difference. So I'll delete this layer just by swiping right. Then I have the option to lock, duplicate or delete. I just want to delete right now. I'll add a new layer. I'll bring it behind my waves and then I'll create my boat. You can still see the bottom of it, but it's sitting on top of the waves, which I kind of like. You see over here that I got this little extra bit that I don't really like. I just want to erase it. So I want to show you a cool erasing trick. So first of all, I want to get to it and be really precise. So I'm going to hide this top layer by clicking on this check mark. So I haven't deleted it. It's still there. I just don't need to see it right now. Then when selecting this, I'm going to go into my eraser and I want to erase this. Now, mm, okay, right now my eraser is using dry brush. So it's going to erase in that format. I wanted to erase in a way that still keeps the integrity of this shape. So a really cool trick is if I press and hold down on my eraser, you see it says erase with current brush. So it matches up whichever brush I'm using, which is chalk and the eraser. So see now it's swapped over to chalk. So I can go in and erase using the exact same kind of brush, which means that the edges will stay the same and it will look completely seamless. So now if I go back and turn on my waves, I've got a boat in the waves. So we have these two layers now, and like I showed you, you can show and hide the visibility of them and you can swap them around. And if you decide that actually you wanna merge them together to be a single layer, you can either tap on the top layer 
and then select merge down and it will just merge itself down or you can just pinch both of them together and they will merge into one layer. You'll also forever have this background color layer and you have the option of turning it down and then you just will see how it looks when it's completely transparent. Sometimes we want to export these with transparency. And if you click on your background layer, you will also be able to change the background color, which I think is really nice touch. You don't have to insert another layer there or anything. You can just use this layer. And you know I love to name things, like if you've watched any of my Figma tutorials, you know that things get named. So if you wanna change the name of this, you can tap on it and say rename, and then you can change it to, let's say, sea and sun. So one more thing I wanna show you is how you will share a file. So we made this really gorgeous design and I wanna share it. So I'll click on this little tool over here and then go into share and then I'll be able to share the image. So I can share it as a Procreate file if I wanna share it to someone to keep going on Procreate or as anything really. I can do Photoshop, PDF, uh, JPEG, PNG. You'll notice that I don't have SVG in here or I have PSD but I don't have um, an Adobe Illustrator file. The reason for that is that Procreate is not a vector drawing tool. Everything you draw on here will be rasterized which means that it's not a vector shape. It won't kind of change size dynamically. It has the size that it is and that's it. So that's one almost like downside of Procreate, but it is what it is. And we get to draw really beautiful things with it. And that was that. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new with these basic Procreate tips. There's going to be a few more Procreate videos, so keep a lookout if you want some more advanced tips or are looking for something specific. And like always, let me know in the comments below if there's something specific that you just can't figure out or want to learn more about in Procreate. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one. Yeah.